start with this net neutrality stuff, right? Net neutrality. You probably heard about it. You probably tune out when you hear about it. But 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 this is this is the thing. It's going to affect you because I don't know of a single human being today in America or you know most human beings in the world who don't use the internet. And this is going to have a direct impact on our use of the internet. And, and it's more than that. It's our use of Netflix and, our, and our, what we see on television because the, the lines between television and the internet are blurring. And this has both to do with net neutrality and with this uh, uh, antitrust lawsuit that the so-called free market justice department of the Trump is launching against AT&T and Time Warner merger. So... All this stuff is really, is really, you know, messed up and all kind of scrunched up together and all related. It's all related and it all has a direct effect on you, on me, on our kids, on our grandkids, but on us right now in our lives every single day because we are consumers of the internet every single day. And this is going to have, as already had and will have a direct impact. Now, what is, well, what is net neutrality? So net neutrality is the idea that the providers of the cables that come into your house or the airwaves, the, 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 you know, the bandwidth that, that you get on your phone. So AT&T and Verizon when it comes to phone, the cable companies when it comes to cable, uh, even DirecTV potentially, they have to give equal access to everybody who goes onto the internet. They have to make it possible for anybody who puts stuff up on the internet. They have to make that, let's say somebody puts up a new website or somebody discover, uh, 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 starts a new streaming service, audio, video, whatever. They have to treat all the producers of content and deliverers of services on the internet, they have to treat them equally. They, they have to not interfere with the delivery of services. Right? That's the idea of net neutrality. It's the idea that internet service providers, including cable companies, wireless providers, should treat all internet traffic equally. Equally. Let me be really clear. Right? This is, ex this is government intervention into an area that government has no big capital in, business in. Absolutely no business in. If internet service providers choose to be net neutral, they can be. If they choose not to, and there's an advantage to being net neutral, then they will have an uncompetitive advantage, uh, disadvantage. There is no business of the government to tell cable companies or wireless companies how to manage the traffic on their cables or in their spectrum. So there was a period in which some of these internet providers were flirting with the idea of providing, in a sense, special access to things like Netflix, but more than just Netflix. Things about... Think about emergency services, healthcare, like these bands that people have, monitors that they have on them that can alert a medical professional if there's a problem with their body. One of the things that startups that did that wanted from the internet companies was they wanted, they wanted to be guaranteed and they were willing to pay for immediacy because these are medical emergencies and they need immediacy. And... So they wanted preference in terms of the internet traffic. And ISPs were willing to do that. But then a lot of the big guys, a lot of the big internet companies said, well, wait a minute, we don't want to have our content. Uh, we don't have to compete in order to get our content on there. We don't have to, comp we don't want to comp have to pay more than Netflix in order to get, we want equal access. It's always been that way. As if the way it's always been has to be continued. So they lobbied. And uh, it was interesting. President Obama got behind this net neutrality. And under Obama, the FCC passed net neutrality laws that basically determined that ISPs, internet service providers, were public utilities. 
they were equal to uh, the old phone companies. Of course, the government should have never, ever, ever regulated the old phone companies. The whole idea of an FCC is wrong. There shouldn't even be an FCC. They shouldn't be in the business of regulating any of it. But okay, but the idea of treating internet ISPs, internet service providers, as telephone companies with the complete, I mean, it's absurd. The internet is so complex as compared to a phone company that has one stream voice. That's it. And this allowed them theoretically to set prices, to, to determine what content was appropriate. It, it gave them access to regulating every aspect of the internet. So, no, I am for dismantling the FCC one regulation at a time, getting rid of their controls on ISPs, on internet companies, and so on. And if it turns out that, I don't know, one of the ISPs says, we don't like anything that smacks of free market right-wing stuff, and we're going to stop broadcasting that, then they'll stop broadcasting that, all right? Then you'll have to go to some other ISP to get the stuff that you like. You have no right to content. You have no right to be provided with a service. You have no right to be provided with anything. Other than the only right you have is to be left alone, to be protected from those who would use force against us, against you, sorry. Some libertarians say, some libertarians say, I'd oppose net neutrality, but local regulations give monopolies to ISPs, so we need more regulations in the form of net neutrality to rein in ISPs. No, you don't solve regulatory problems by creating more regulatory problems. You go fight the regulations. If people have local monopolies, fight the local monopolies. So it's, it, this is how we get statism as it is today. So with net neutrality, since Obama put, put this rule in place, the FCC under Obama put this rule in place, investment in broadband has gone down. Yeah, I'm not going to invest in broadband if I don't get to control pricing over my lines. So if you want investment, if you want competition, if you want a variety of different ways in which to access the amazing internet that we have, then you want ISPs to have complete pricing control. But you'd never, ever increase government power in order to solve a problem of too much government power. So, uh, but, but let me, let, I want to finish on this because somebody on, on YouTube is making this comment. It's bad for consumers. I don't care. And the government shouldn't care. The government's job is not to protect consumers. The government has no business in consumer protection. Except to protect you from fraud and force. Consumers have nothing to do with this. What about producers? Everybody who is a consumer is also a producer, or most of us are anyway, because we have to produce in order to consume. But it's, not, it's, it's irrelevant. What, whether it's good or not for consumers is irrelevant. This is why I hate antitrust laws, because they set the consumers as some kind of utilitarian standard, and we have to figure out what's good for consumers. How do we know what's good for consumers? Net neutrality does not benefit all consumers because if there's less investment in bandwidth, then I will suffer if I have limited bandwidth today because they're not going to invest and I'm not going to get as good as bandwidth in the future. But that's not the point. It's not the point. You have no right to particular bandwidth. You have no right to get at a particular price. You have no right to consume anything that you haven't produced yourself. And if you go out there and you buy stuff, it's completely up to the producer how much he sells it for and who he sells it for. And the idea that any of you or any of the, anybody at the FCC or any central planner knows what the future is going to be like, what the future is going to determine in terms of innovations and progress of what impact this law or that law will have is absurd. This is part of why government should just stay out of it. Because you can't predict it. It's impossible to predict. They didn't predict the internet. It's not like the government set out to create the internet. They accidentally create the internet. 
You do not have the general welfare clause in the Constitution. It's not about what we today perceive as the general welfare. The general welfare clause was about protecting the individual rights of all Americans, not of some, not at the exclusion of some. It was about protecting everybody. And government needs to lay their hands off of any economic decision, any business decision, unless there's fraud involved, unless there's coercion somehow involved. And part of the reason is, other than it's not protecting rights, is that they can't predict the future. They don't know what markets will come up with. Yeah, there might be some bottleneck of the internet. And because of that bottleneck, some genius might come up with an intervention that changes everything as we know it. Who knows? It's not me to speculate. It's not the chairman of the FCC to speculate. You can speculate if you want, but at your own time, at your own dime, without a gun pointing at my head, telling me that in the general welfare we should do X and Y. I wish, I really wish, that the founding fathers had not included a general welfare clause in the Constitution because it's so open to misinterpretation. And anytime you talk about the public interest, the common good, the good of the nation, America's interest, you're opening yourselves up to a disaster. Yeah, Stuart has a great quote from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt said, the public be damned. I'm working for my shareholders. Now, of course, to work for your stockholders, you have to care about the public because they're the consumers, and that's how you make money for your shareholders. But your primary is not consumers. But, but again, that's a businessman. The businessman could have said, I only care about consumers. I don't care. It's his voluntary decision. But the government, you know, has no business. Government has no business. Now, people say, but everybody uses the Internet. Yeah, everybody uses the Internet. Everybody consumes health care. Everybody eats. Everybody, everybody sleeps. Maybe the government, we should have a sleep police dictating how I sleep because everybody sleeps. Um, you know, the government, uh, everybody, everybody has health care, so we should have a right to health care. Everybody has an edu- needs an education and gets an education, so we should have a right to education. No. Rights about freedoms of actions. You cannot have a right to my stuff. You cannot have a right to my money. You cannot have a right to my services. You cannot have a right to my time. All you have a right to is live your life as you see fit, free of coercion. That's it. And rights are there so that you can pursue the rational values necessary for your own success as a human being. Own success as a human being. You do not make decisions based on some fictitious, you know, uh, a made-up utility function about what's good for society. Because there is no such thing as society. All they are individuals. And therefore, all we do is protect the rights of individuals to live their life. We protect their freedoms and leave them alone.